ready for digital experiences, navigating the digital transformation journey, getting customer love in the digital world. So that's exactly where this panel is headed and we're going to welcome our moderator who's a seasoned marketer with proven expertise in creating loyalty programs, has more than 20 years of experience and has worked across industries such as banking, insurance, telecom, automotive and retail and today joins us Head Marketing and PR, India First Life Insurance Company Limited. Please welcome Mr. Ashish Walia. Welcome, sir. I know you're going to be taking us into this panel, so very quickly, let me invite our panelists on onto our screen. We first welcome uh, someone who is a cross-functional business leader with more than two decades of experience in customer engagement and digital strategy. Please welcome COO Aegon Life Insurance Company Limited, Mr. Naveen Bachwani. Welcome. Thank you for joining us this afternoon, sir, and your patience. We now welcome someone who currently heads the entire customer vertical co comprising of digital loyalty and customer experience functions at Aircore Hotels for India and South Asia region. Please welcome Director, Digital Loyalty and Guest Experience, India and South Asia, Accor Group, Mr. Shomonath Chatterjee. Welcome, sir. Good afternoon. Thank you for being here. We now have with us someone who is a global strategic co corporate communications leader with two decades of experience working in world-class global organizations. Director, Corporate Communications, NetApp. A loud round of applause for Ms. Anandita Bhatnagar. Thank you for being here today. Joining us up next is a successful leader with 23 years of experience across global, regional and country roles in startups and MNCs. We welcome Vice President Marketing India and Regional Leader South Asia, Bata India Limited, Mr. Anand Narang. Welcome, sir. Joining our panel this afternoon is an executive leader with 23 plus years of multi-industry experience in international sales and marketing, technology and project delivery amongst many others. Please welcome Chief Operation and Customer Experience, Bajaj Alliance Life Insurance Company Limited, Mr. Kaizad Hiramanek. Welcome. Thank you for being here. And finally, to complete our panel, someone who has 20 plus years of comprehensive experience credited with combining marketing, sales and business management, please welcome Vice President Marketing, Nitco Limited, Mr. Shubroto Basu. Welcome. All right, let's a loud round of applause for all our panelists. And I'm going to hand over to our moderator to take us into this session. We thank all of you for your patience and we know it's going to be a fantastic panel. Thank you. Thank you, Kisha. Thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon to all of you, uh, fellow panelists, and uh, to everybody listening. It's a it's an interesting uh, topic which has been given to us. Uh, you know, the love for the digital world and how to get uh, and how we are building in the digital transformation days and how are we able to get customer love, right? I don't know how many of you actually uh, recall. You know, when uh, when the pandemic hit us. You know, there was this viral post going on uh, that who's actually leading the digital transformation journey. It was a very interesting one, actually hit me quite hard, but uh, for some it may be positive, for some it may be negative. You know, it said the CEO, the CTO, or any of the CXOs, or, or is it the COVID? And they had a bit, big tick on the COVID, which is very funny because uh, actually the digital transformation journey started much, much before. It's just that the pace at which we have seen the digitalization happen in the recent times uh, is very different. Yeah, so such have been the times and, and friends. Therefore, you know, what we are trying to do as a group uh, and as a panel, what we will be addressing is, you know, the digital transformation journey. Is it is it actually complex? Does it require a culture shift? Uh, you know, is the adoption slow? Is the adoption fast? Uh, does it involve operations? Uh, you know, does it require process changes? Some of these questions, uh, you know, around what a customer uh, would go through as individuals, what we may feel as companies, what we may need to build on is what we want to address and uh, discuss in this panel. And, uh, you know, before I start uh, asking specific questions, you know, uh, you know, it's a, it's a very senior member panel. And what I would like to do 
is you know across the panel i would want to understand from them you know how has their brand how have they been seeing this digital transformation journey so i'll just go around the corner and and you know i'll just go around the table and ask people how have their journeys been uh you know it women's day is around the corner so you know we have to give the privilege to anandita to start so anandita you know uh, let's hear it from you to start uh, what how has been the digital transformation journey for you in your organization and how have you seen brands i'm sure you are interacting with a lot of brands and and your experience will be very different than most of us on the other side of the fence hey first of all thank you for that ashish uh, women's day or not uh, that's very nice of you um yeah so we are a uh, b2b technology company so digital has always been our bread and butter uh, what it has done is though in the last uh, year or so is of course everything is accelerated people who never thought of digital have gone digital uh for us even though the situation for the entire population across the globe is very unfortunate uh but at uh, a technology company that actually is part of the infrastructure for creating these digital experiences um uh, for us it's been a very uh, good run because finally we've been able to get across uh, the digital uh, experience message that we were always trying to get across now wearing the hat of a marketer or more specifically a pr person i would say that um, you know if if you look at uh, any experience that we are trying to externally create it's to gain customer love and appreciation we know that once in this digital world uh, customers like us they review us they give us shares and recommendations and reviews and all kinds of things and on the other side too it's it's a very uh, i would say um you know uh fast fast love fast hate kind of a world so for us to uh, this transformation even though we are, we were always digital and uh, you know if you look at bangalore most most companies that are in, in the technology world will tell you that we were always prepared for this situation but we had to scale for our customers quite a bit uh, for example bank uh, banks and other uh, you know even mom and pop stores or uh if you look at uh, any of your uh, local kirana wala store they've all gone on some app or the other i mean milk delivery for example so customer experience uh, in digital is just all pervasive right now what it's done is it has for us just to focus on three things one is the last mile technology that we use that delivers a final experience to the customer so of course always you know uh, as marketers we've always tried to promote our products and solutions but you know it's it's the customer experience at the end of the day of how good or bad the product feels to them but for us now the last mile connectivity has become so important if you look at the app experience even though the milk is the same the packet of milk that you're getting i'm just oversimplifying this probably but the the, the app that you sign up with does it allow you to choose a time does it allow you to choose uh exactly what form what packet whatever i mean so see if, whether it is very uh you know consumer kind of a world or end user computing in the high tech world wherein you know you had five employees who could work from home and now you have 10000 employees who need to work from home for your business to run from a day to day uh, uh you know on a day to day basis those things have changed a lot so that's one the n mile computer uh, consumer experience the second thing is how we communicate with our customers has completely gone uh, you know online and uh, while uh, from a pr perspective india is the only place where print medium is still growing this last year or so has actually uh, given us even more impetus to try and reach out to our customers in virtual ways that uh, we were experimenting with all this while and and thirdly you know uh, it's humanized all the brands so if you if you see over the last year and a half many of us have gone uh, personal on our brands uh, most executives who were very shy of going on linkedin or twitter or to promote brands have actually joined the bandwagon for many it's a green field opportunity to create a personal brand that pulls the power of their personal brand into their uh, you know customer customer experience so these three things are the big shifts that i am uh, actually seeing 
uh, across the board. Interesting, interesting, Anandya. Thanks so much. Uh, okay, now you know it's it's very interesting how the experiences have changed. Uh, you know, remember the days when you know in the uh, when you would enter a shop, you know, you would get an extra uh, eclairs as or a, or a toffee at the counter, or you know when you uh, you know somebody was just uh, messaging when you enter an event, you may you may get some uh, goodies as you as you enter an event to a digital world which we are in. So customer experiences have been very different in the digital world, and I uh, being an insurance sector. Uh, you know, being a marketer who has seen uh, different uh, uh, verticals or industries, I, I find that as a customer of insurance, I find it, and the reason I'm, I'm speaking a bit on this subject is because we have two senior members uh, who are from the insurance industry in this panel. And what I would like to ask them one by one is that from, the, from a brand perspective and heading such you know, uh, insurance brand for you from a customer experience point of view, how have you seen this digital transformation journey shift, uh, change, or is it just that it was a part of the journey and, and, uh, and, and the last one year just progress the journey or speeding up the journey uh, or brought in more customer centricity? Uh, you know, Naveen, you want to go first? Naveen, who's uh, uh, the chief operating officer for Egon Life Insurance. I would uh, want Naveen to uh, say a few words. Thanks, Ashish, and thanks for having me on this panel. I'm audible, right? I'm audible? What? Yes, yes. So uh, it's a good question. Uh, for us, so I'll answer it in two levels. For us at Egon, uh, we started the digital transformation journey a couple of years ago. And, uh, you know, COVID and lockdown notwithstanding, we were already in the process of transformation with regard to moving from a largely physical model to a much more digital first model. What we ended up doing is accelerating that, uh, defining a much more uh, digital first vision at the start of uh, the previous year and trying to use that opportunity to make the most of uh, everything. Now, interestingly, inside the organization, uh, what I want to highlight is we don't think of just the website or a mobile app as digital in the first place. We see them as, as parts of the puzzle. Uh, but from our point of view, the digital first uh, idea or the approach that we're taking forward is really to take processes from the ground up, uh, keeping the customer at the heart of it and trying to uh, trying to eliminate friction points and inconveniences that go throughout the journey from you know pre-sales to the actual sale to the post-sales uh, bit of it. So that's the Agon approach. And to that extent, we're putting a lot of Energy is behind simplifying processes, reducing friction for the customer, uh, trying to make the journey as seamless as possible with you know, multiple integrations with fintech providers and technology and tools. But uh, I also want to use the opportunity to highlight that it's not about uh, you know fancy buzzwords like AI and ML only. It's also about addressing nuts and bolts. For example, you know on most on 99% of the web interfaces that you encounter, the way we enter date of birth as an example is still very clunky uh, in the sense of most of us wanting to, needing to go back 30, 40 years in the scroll of the year pop up that comes and then choose a month and then choose a date. And some of these things are still not in place. So we are looking at it at both lengths from a long-term point of view, you know, addressing some of these uh, nuts and bolts also and keeping an eye on future trends and uh, taking that forward. So over the course of the panel, I'll share some more examples of it. But to some of the point I want to make on this, it's all about figuring out who is your customer, knowing them, and trying to build relevance for them. I think digital technology, it's all a means to an end. Unless you have a clear definition of what customer need you're trying to address for what customer segment, uh, you know, all of this becomes just a new shiny object. So that's the perspective I have. Thank you. Thank you so much, Naveen. That was interesting. Uh, you know, taking back to another friend, uh, Kezad, who's... Uh, you know, who's another seasoned insurance professional, uh, you know, chief operations and customer experience officer at Bajaj. Uh, you know, Kezad, what has been your experience, right? Because as, as Naveen said, uh, you know, and I tend to agree that a lot of times these buzzwords uh, uh, become the reason for a lot of changes happening in certain organizations. Whereas insurance is a field where, you know, the customer, uh, the customer is very, very 
you know is is available or let's say you you contact the customer only once or twice in a year in such scenarios how will we create customer love and how will we be able to create a digital journey so that the customer remembers us for one year and how are the brands looking at that kezad over to you yeah so you know thanks ashish that's a very good question and you know i i'll keep my answer pretty short because we have a large panel and you know the good part is with a panel like this everybody tends to echo a similar train of thought so i'm not really going to reinvent the wheel uh, you know we actually started our journey on digital about 3 or 4 years ago with a you know simple three fold mantra of uh, personalize contextualize and virtualize uh, because you know largely you know at that point in time we were uh, you know not to my pleasure but we were known as the lic of the private sector in in insurance Uh, which is not a compliment according to me uh, but uh, the point very simply is that uh, uh, you know we worked uh, really hard to first a know our customers b you know make sure that we didn't do a one size fits all kind of uh, you know communication strategy and three very clearly you know started uh, encouraging customers to move to the entire virtual journey because you see most people sitting in life insurance headquarters you know either come from harvard stanford or chinchwad and they believe that any of these any of the customers typically you know outside bombay delhi or whatever are you know slightly you know below par in terms of their understanding of digital uh, so you know this is a myth that has been completely busted uh, by by us uh, because you know 50% of our new policy holders year on year come from you know the east Uh, which is largely regarded as you know not that uh, easy in terms of penetration or knowing customers or digital behavior uh, so you know the lockdown actually taught us some great lessons our digital uptake uh, went up 100% our digital payments went up some 40% uh, and uh, largely you know the calls to our call centers the walk ins in our branches uh, etc has all gone down so that you know and i think what navin said uh, made total sense which was you know if you make journey simple and intuitive and easy to access uh, i mean there is absolutely no reason why a customer today you know whether he's 80 years old and uneducated or he's you know 18 years old and you know the son of mukesh ambani uh, to be using digital uh, the core uh, you know if you ask me the core of any digital uh, offering should be to digitize the physical but humanize the digital and if you keep that in mind i think uh, you've got a winner on your hands wow that's very very well said kazad uh, thank you so much uh, you know uh, digitize the physical humanize the digital right that's right i love that love that uh, that's an interesting one so so uh, with that uh, as a as a pointer uh, you know let me move to anand okay anand who heads bata as a consumer segment okay that's a segment where at least me personally for the longest time you know i would not uh purchase uh at least i will not buy shoes without going to a shop right uh so in such an environment how is bata as an organization looking at uh, digitalization and the whole digital transformation journey or or uh, anand is, is it that you know is it even needed do you even feel the need for this or is it just to keep up with the pace of the way uh, you know everyone is moving how do you look at and how does brand like bata look at digital transformation so sure so i think uh, the brand bata doesn't uh, need any introduction i hope uh, all of you uh, would know it the only interesting fact that probably some of you may not know is that it's an international global brand uh, has presence in about 70 plus markets uh, so the digitization and digitalization journey is actually began at bata about 3 4 years back Uh, we started with uh, simply measuring consumers feedback via nps uh, so any time you actually shop in bata uh, you get a simple message uh, which asks uh, you to actually rate the shopping experience uh, and then also you know rate uh, how you were served uh, you know did you get enough collections and products to try and everything you know? so so that goes into the nps and different cross functional team to judge their performance do they actually need to improve a store versus uh, let's say improve a product or a collection line Uh, over the last, uh, uh, I would say two years, uh, uh, and I would build on you know what Naveen actually highlighted, and even Kaiser, is that uh, it's no, it's no longer one journey uh, for all consumers. Consumers are different, and I think Ashish, you also mentioned, uh, is there a need to actually create different solutions? 
so what uh, we actually saw was that based, based on the, the digital savviness of our consumers, uh, the ownership of uh, digital instruments like a credit or debit or wallet cards, uh, versus the ease with which they actually want to shop uh, with a store manager versus let's say remotely on a dot-com site. Uh, we divided our consumers into three different personas. Uh, so right from a digital novice who is slightly like a 55, 60 year old, uh, typically our moms and dads uh, who would actually go to a store uh, and would like to get a solution like that uh, in terms of footwear uh, to somebody who is actually digital adopters, uh, who is actually uh, trying to uh, use their smartphones, maybe some of the messaging apps to actually shop uh, versus somebody who is a uh, digital born, uh, you know, basically all the new millennials uh, and uh, they're called digital natives. Uh, they are very comfortable shopping from dot-com sites. Now, after we actually did this kind of personification, we actually created different solutions for different audiences. So, so simple things like for somebody who is actually about 40 years old, uh, comfortable with uh, messaging apps, uh, but would still like to speak to a neighborhood store manager, we created uh, a shopping or a store on WhatsApp. So it's called Bata Chat Shop. So you can basically shop from your neighborhood store and we created something called hyperlocal delivery service uh, so that they could actually get the footwear delivered to their homes within one to two hours. So that was one solution that we created during COVID. Uh, the second one was basically we scaled up our presence on marketplaces like the Amazon, Flipkart and Mintra and also increasing the spend behind our uh, Butterdot Insight, uh, which is actually to inspire the younger millennials who are very comfortable shopping on those kind of uh, dot-com channels. The last one was you know, for the elderly segment, those who are not stepping out of their condominiums. We created something called Bata Store on Wheels, which actually came with a digital enabled uh, tablet support. So we would set up mobile kiosks in residential societies, uh, walk, you know, have a curated collection there so people could actually see you know, what they wanted to shop. But if there was not a product that was actually available on the spot, we would actually show them through a digital catalog. And so they could actually order it you know, from the nearest neighborhood store. So very different services. Uh, and I you know, agree with both Naveen and Kaiser that it's no longer going to be one solution that fits all needs. Uh, there are different digital solutions, the commerce, in, commerce engines and the kind of capabilities that are available in the market, right from voice commerce to you know, even conversational commerce. Uh, different solutions need to be tailored for different audiences across it. Interesting, interesting. Thank you so much, Anand. Uh, uh, related, I guess a related uh, but a different market altogether. Uh, you know, let me invite Shubrato Basu, uh, who heads uh, marketing at Nitco Limited. Uh, you know, something where you know you will have a B two B scenario, you will have a B two C scenario. How, how do you look at uh, digital transformation, Subhato? I guess, uh, thanks, Ashish. I think the similarity between Anand and me is we have a category which is about look, touch, and feel. And it's very difficult to use digital as the only e-commerce model to sell a product look, touch, and feel. But still taking off from Anand's perspective, if you look at shoes, today, 10% of shoes are sold via e-commerce. So the power of digital is not only transforming the customer's journey, but is actually helping a customer buy a product by not even seeing or touching or feeling the product via the e-commerce platform. So I guess the challenge would be face is largely a business which is a B2B layer and a B2C layer, as you mentioned. So we're dealing with a, a project owner, an architect, a site contractor, a mason, an applicator, and an end consumer. All have, uh, I would say, a different context of handling products. And uh, the challenges there are plenty because every customer, like Anand mentioned, has a different segment, a different uh, way of and addressing that product perspective, but all of the similar contexts are looking at design to touch, feel, and understand what that design will do for them in their space. So yeah, different challenge, but I guess the whole onus of this challenge falls into how you can engage the community, how you can understand the community better, understand the different pain points of the community. There are plenty of pain points in our segment, right from uh, choosing a product to actually getting the product on your home done in the manner you want it to do. So trying to solve the pain points, and a lot of these pain points can be solved digitally, by which you can address the convenience of the customer, uh, help him select better, choose better, help him decide better, and also help the customer and all the uh, technical expertise in the whole process of decision making uh, define their requirements in a different context. But I guess it just boils down to understanding the customer's needs a little deeper and then probably strategizing them to understand what you can do with those needs and create those special moments which kind of 
makes the customer really happy. And just focusing on them rather than focusing on everything what data can do with us. So that's just what I need. Short, actually, explain to you my view. Yeah, I th I think the interesting part what uh, what Subhato you spoke and what Anand was mentioning, like uh, personifying or or uh, creating segments of customers and and approaching them differently, whether it is digital audience or uh, you know people who actually prefer offline methodology or traditional way. So uh, so across the board you see and you need to move ahead with the with the new age uh, with that let me move to somnath chatterjee who who's a director at uh, accor group now he he probably would be providing some of these services to us and will be in a in a better position to uh, to give a view of what different clientele which he has uh, you know would be asking and uh, maybe give a completely different perspective to the Way digital transformation is happening, Somnath. Hi, thank you so much, and it's great to speak at the Customer Fest once again. And uh, thank you so much for uh, you know being part of this uh, esteemed panel. Uh, yes, in fact, it's been great hearing all of you speak about uh, you know the various digital transformation in your sectors. Uh, I guess with the hospitality or the travel services being such a high touch uh, environment, the last one year. In the pandemic has probably eroded most of the processes in the last hundred years. When I say that our very foundation of you know our customers and guests coming and staying with our hotels, sleeping on the beds, eating on the you know at the restaurants, uh, you know doing meetings and conventions in our hotels, uh, the very mantra has probably been uh, you know uh, taken a three sixty degree or a one eighty degree turn because of the pandemic uh, restrictions. Uh, you know, so how the industry has grappled in the one last year, I think, shows a lot of character for the industry. Uh, hotels, airlines, uh, our entire, you know, we were at one end of the uh, conundrum of, uh, you know, high touch to automatically becoming contactless given the restrictions, given the COVID, uh, you know, uh, regulations, uh, given the entire, uh, you know, fright and scare of our customers as well, right? I don't know how many of you have probably gone back to a hotel in the last one year. Uh, so there has, it's, it's, it's great. Thanks for the support, right? And, and, and of course, it's, it's, a, it's a human behavior to sort of go and relax and rejuvenate and go out with families and eat. So there has been a lot of, uh, you know, back and work that the hotels had to overnight change the business fundamentals. Uh, starting from probably hybrid, uh, you know, weddings that we started doing in our hotels, uh, with the uh, space constraint, with the uh, regulation restriction of 50 plus, you know, people, uh, you know, getting together, we actually did a, a you know virtual wedding concept called as Vivab at No Hotel, wherein you could have probably 50 people at one of the venues, but given our large network of almost 20 plus. No hotel brands, uh, you know, across this uh, country, you could actually have invited your guests in other hotels. There, they could have viewed the wedding process virtually. We also created, uh, you know, parts like shagun box and Dawat box that you could be, uh, you know, delivered to your, uh, you know, uh, doorstep as well, so that you could eat the same, uh, you know, uh, things that was being celebrated or served at the, you know, the wedding as well. So these were some of the things. Of course, there are other, uh, you know, further interpretations like All Connect, which is a virtual or a hybrid model of meetings. Uh, I think almost 50 to 80 percent of global meeting spaces or meeting concepts will move to hybrid models, where with the restrictions, by the time all 100 percent vaccination happens across the globe, you will have these large conventions happening probably at a local venue, and then you will have it aired virtually. So how do those happen, uh, right? Uh, so these all were sort of taken into consideration. Uh, I guess, again, from a contactless perspective, you know, our entire processes of, uh, you know, check-ins, registrations, eating at the table at a restaurant to, uh, you know, QR code to sort of see the menus, right? So this entire thing had to go through a lot of change, probably on 180 degree change. And the hotels, uh, you know, had to sort of take this, on an overnight basis. 
So from probably a digital non-native segment mm. to really making the business survive on the fundamentals of digital or you know digitization, I think uh, the industry has come a long way. Also, mm. I think a couple of other aspects for survival of business has been uh, because of the discontinuity of our uh, you know travelers, frequent travelers, loyalty members, we have actually uh, tested subscription model for the first time in the industry. Something like uh, Netflix, right? So you you subscribe to our inventory, our hotels for a year, two years, depending on when you want to come and travel with us, right? But that flexibility, so that it also uh, you know helps in uh, you know cash reserves, uh, upfront payments, but then it also gives the flexibility to our members, to our uh, you know frequent guests to come in and stay, come in and use it at any point in time, as and when they feel. So I think, yeah, uh, looking back, one year has been a lot of work, a lot of changes uh, to sort of adapt to this ever-changing world. And uh, I think we've come out very strongly after this. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Somnath. It's very interesting, actually, that you say that. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, I know it for the insurance industry. You are talking about the hotel industry. And I'm sure about, uh, you know, across the board, uh, you know, I, I actually don't remember uh, a lockdown phase. Uh, I, I guess most of us were next day working from home and at least the insurance segment, which is also under necessities, most of our offices have been open and, and you know, available for customers if they, if they want any services. Uh, uh, so going back to, you know, the insurance segment, which is close to my heart as well, uh, you know, uh, the new age customer and you still have, you know, different segments of customers, right? You have the young millennials uh, and you still have the other extreme of 50, age 50, 55, 60 uh, as customers. So, uh, uh, Kezad, maybe, you know, over to you in terms of and addressing the needs of these different segments uh, uh, when we are looking at the, at creating solutions or ensuring that the customers, uh, you know, fall as, as, as the theme says, right? customers actually fall in love uh, with the digital world, digital journey or us as a brand. Any thoughts on that, Keza? Yeah. So thanks, Ashish. A lovely question. You know, about two weeks ago, I actually published an article in the Indian Express, uh, you know, which talked about the simple, about simple formula for customer experience. Uh, mm -hmm. which is uh, EX plus DX multiplied by TX is equal to HX, which is employee experience plus digit distributor experience multiplied mm -hmm. by the technology experience is equal to a human experience. Okay, oh. so please do check it out. It's on LinkedIn as well. Uh, more importantly, you know, I'll give you three very good examples, uh, you know, of uh, humanizing the digital. Uh, if you And, uh, you know, the first one, of course, is uh, something called Smart Assist, which is basically nothing but screen sharing for a distributor uh, with his customer to actually have a face to face interaction in a in a virtual medium uh, exchange documents you know make sure the customers completely uh, uh, told the truth uh, basis which the sale is closed uh, this is going to be further embellished by you know uh, adding a doctor on call to that uh, interaction such that the customer can do a video medical and you know uh, get the entire policy issued on the spot on one screen so that's uh, one uh, uh, you know example of a new age customer uh, and, you know, typically because inter insurance is typically largely intermediated, uh, customers today still don't want to meet a strange pesky sales fellow, you know, entering his house on Saturday and Sunday and scaring his wife and, you know, children saying, ke, inko, ho, kya ho gaya, to aapko kya ho gaya, types, you know, so they prefer to do it on a screen. Uh, the second is, you know, of course, our uh, video calling facility for service. So because our branches had to shut down as well uh, because of uh, lockdown norms, uh, you know, a lot of our senior citizens. Uh, basically, were not able to come and submit their, you know, certificate of existence for their annuities and pensions. So what we did very clearly is move that entire experience to video, so that the senior citizen never had to step out of his home. Uh, he just had to kind of, you know, come in front of a customer service agent and says and say, yes, I am alive, and you know, his pensions continued. Uh, the third experience, which is, you know, cuts across both, uh, you know, young customers as well as uh, old old people, is the WhatsApp platform. Uh, you know, the WhatsApp platform, I mean, while everybody today boasts of a WhatsApp platform, what's really unique about ours is the fact that it, for whatever reason, see the WhatsApp, uh, you know, engine is largely uh, driven by a bot. The bot is largely a tutored answer, 
the difference that we provide is that for whatever reason, if the bot fails, there is an agent who enters that conversation. You're trying to ask me a question, but because you know my bot is not able to answer you, I am answering you as you know, let's say Kaisa Dhiramanek. So, you know, that is truly, you know, humanization of uh, digital processes. In the first instance, the agent is in the customer's uh, space, but he is not in his house. The second, the old person is talking to an agent and you know, just proving that, yes, you know, I'm breathing and, you know, alive. And the third is, you know, very clearly that, you know, this is completely digital, but yet there is a human being. So, you know, humanizing the digital and creating a human experience is what has really changed in our perspective of dealing with our customers. Very, very interesting, Kaza. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, really, really interesting examples. Uh, I will move this to uh, Naveen now. Uh, and the reason is because uh, we all know and, uh, you know, the Egon uh, Life Insurance as a company has been, uh, you know, very, very digitally savvy and and started their journey uh, much earlier. And, uh, and of course, in their journey and in their digital transformation process, a lot would have been done, accomplished much before, uh, you know, uh, COVID even hit us. So their perspective and their looking at digital transformation would be at a very different stage. Uh, so Naveen, for you, uh, you know, if I have to ask you the same question, but in a, in a different way, how do you look at uh, the future of customer service solutions uh, from, uh, you know, uh, if we have, to, if you have to look at the future and we have to say futuristic solutions, what are the thoughts which come to your mind from, uh, from your industry perspective? Naveen? Naveen, we can't hear you. Not yet, not yet, Naveen. Should I, should I circle back to you? Maybe you want to check. Uh, anybody else who can hear Naveen? Still, we can't hear. Uh, yeah, Naveen. Still, are you able to hear me? Yes, yes. Now we can hear Naveen. Go so for thanks, it. thanks for having me uh, on this question. I I fully endorse uh, you know, some of the examples that Kaisa shared. Uh, very, very nice examples of how the human touch can be brought. And uh, in response to the customer service aspects of it, so. What I would attempt is to try and use some sense of what this next gen customer service stack uh, you know, looks like for a digital first organization. So to that extent, uh, there are a couple of points I want to make. One is that uh, you know, earlier we used to take a multi-channel approach, which eventually moved to an omni-channel approach where multiple uh, sort of channels were used, but the context was still carried forward. And, and you could have a conversation drop off on one channel and take it to the other. And that's kind of uh, one of the examples that Kaisal shared as well. What we are now looking at is opti-channel, which is basically not just the fact that there is multiple channels and there is contextual clarity, but uh, what is the channel that that particular customer prefers to work with? And you know, this is an important input to how the customer service stack develops, because in that, what you end up doing is doing what matters to this particular customer. Some people may be okay with WhatsApp, some may prefer FP. Some may prefer talking to a call center, uh, building some intelligence in your system to actually figure out, you know, what is the preferred channel, not just for a certain customer segment, but also for a certain type of query or request. So, you know, even when we look back on our own consumer behavior, we'd like to do more complicated things or more involving tasks or larger screens or, you know, desktop, laptop versions, whereas we are okay at doing certain other things on a mobile because it is quick and easy to get going. So trying to build, you know, that layer of intelligence into it. So moving from, you know, just anytime, anywhere to also any mode and bringing that input from a customer segment and a task-oriented perspective is part of the way we are taking customer service going forward. The other thing is that we're looking at is really uh, trying to see what are the uh, large uh, rocks, if I can call it that, which move the needle. Now, in that sense, in the insurance context, you know, claims is a very big part of the experience. And in, in doing so, you know, what we're working on is trying to improve the end-to-end -end tying from filing the claim to actually paying out the claim and trying to experience that for the customer in the most frictionless manner possible. So 
trying to eliminate documents, trying to eliminate the burden of proof as much as possible, of course, within the risk controls and the framework that the organization has. But how can I make this much more friendly and, uh, and uh, appealing to the customer that at a difficult time, they're not going through you know, further difficulties or inconveniences. So looking at one or two big areas that can move the needle, you know, that's another uh, aspect. The third aspect I want to bring up is trying to create a unified uh, design language. Now, uh, it may sound a bit technical, but uh, ultimately uh, digital experience is, is overall a part of the customer experience, the way customers uh, you know, actually interact with your brand. If your communication framework, if the way you design various interfaces online versus how you come across offline, if the whole organization and the brand is not in sync, you know, then you get a very disconnected experience for the customer. So creating a unified design language is, is a very key part of building the next gen customer service. Because today the reality is, you know, you may think of yourself as an insurance company or unified design experience i think uh, makes a lot of sense in these days you know things like you know today it's like that hyper local right uh, uh, today uh, somebody in gujarat may want uh, a gujarati language experience uh, if i have to give that example in in simple manner and uh, that experience cannot be any different from uh, anybody uh, you know using an let's say an english website in, in you know uh, from a perspective, right? Uh, uh, let's move to Anandita. Anandita, uh, back to you. You know, I'm sure you must be listening to a lot of these requirements from a uh, lot of people like us. Yeah. Coming, <laughs> I was actually just, uh, the wheels in my mind were turning as Naveen was talking about it, yeah. wide customer yeah. experience. And it's, uh, yeah. it's joyous actually for me and my company because, um, you know, with the cloud and the data services that we provide, we make all of this happen. And it's so nice to see how it manifests differently. But for ourselves, if you look at my backdrop, it's very colorful. This is our brand now. Over a year ago, we went through this transformation ourselves where we said that just like what Naveen said, you know, we don't know who's buying now. Earlier, it used to be there used to be one IT decision maker called, uh, you know, network admin or storage admin our folks would go to them and say, okay, so how's the infrastructure needs? Do you need more of this, less of that? Do you need this new faster uh, you know, storage technology? And uh, that, that's the conversation. Now, uh, two, I think three years ago with the advent of uh, the hyperscalers, namely Amazon Web Services, Azure, Microsoft, and then Google Cloud, and of course, Ali Cloud, uh, what has happened is this has been commoditized completely. So once once upon a time, the IT decision makers used to make all the decisions in buying technology, no more. Today, if I'm a developer or if I am a shopkeeper, I can just procure some cloud storage from Amazon Web Services in exactly three clicks. So that's how accessible uh, technology has become to customers. And that's where what Naveen is talking about is so pertinent to be accessible to a wider group of customers than you could ever imagine in this new digitized world. And which is why this color here, uh, you know, most technology companies are doing away with their serious brand image. Uh, we ourselves have done that. And you will, you will be seeing a lot more casual and more uh, approachable behavior from technology uh, companies in general, because we've not ever had the privilege of being directly in front of the uh, end customer. We've sort of kept very stiff upper lip um, so far, but now look at us. I mean, everybody is trying to uh, create these seamless user experiences and why not? Because it's become so accessible. So the value that we bring to the table as marketeers and PR people 
has also gone through this shift which everyone else has talked about so i will not dwell on that i will dwell on my specific love which is public relations which is so authentic so building this authentic voice uh, you know you know when there is an advertisement you know somebody is selling something to you uh, and and the customer today is not uh, foolish when they see a newspaper article either they know that those things also have the mechanism but pure play pr is still a field where you build an authentic voice for this digital uh, you know uh, experience and then how to catch these customers who are at different uh, levels of buying or uh, you know different personas and their buying behavior that's that's become a really uh, challenging uh, you know uh, task for all of us uh, and, and we're trying to uh, call it out through social being more present uh, of course everybody has today a bot or an assistant or ai but uh, smart users of technology are actually trying to dismiss that and they still want to go to the human experience so humanizing through artificial intelligence has become really important in our workplace yeah. going back yeah. to PR. yeah yeah so uh, so interesting that you say that so i actually wanted to you know ask this to somnath whose industry you know we all have been the consumers to the hotel industry and and uh, you know we all uh, have experienced some kinds of events happening in in that industry he shared some examples of how uh, you know some of the events are happening today uh, somnath my question to you is do you see uh, digital playing a good role uh, a substantial role do you see that as a new channel for Uh, for the hotel industry uh, going forward or you you think you know you, you know it's just a phase and it will you know the things will change from a and i and i ask this more as a consumer uh, because from a consumer experience point of view i would always prefer you know having that uh, of a uh, hotel experience you know uh, when you when you go you actually experience things so how uh, you know eventually how are you looking at things sure somnath yeah uh, no i think to answer your question uh, hospitality is a lag industry it mirrors the trends and you know the consumer behaviors across right so with with the entire consumer demographics moving to millennials uh, or even people you know uh, mirroring the entire uh, penetration of internet smartphones our you know booking channels have also mirrored that right people are booking through online travel agents people are booking through a trivago people are booking through our own websites right and then i i like the anecdote which navin gave about the omni channel and the opti channel now i think i think it's it's very relevant for our industry as well because what's happening is that while we have all these several channels through you know our b2b sales online websites people directly calling our hotels it's the problem now of owning the customer i know at the end of the day the customer is coming and staying with me at the hotel but the ownership of this starts much earlier or this acquisition starts much earlier and we all are fighting the same game with digitization with personalization with your preferences uh and and we are fighting it with much stronger or level uh, you know uh, players like the booking.coms of the world the expedias of the world or the c vents or you know all these uh, b2b giants so that's where i think the future also lies in that personalization and owning that guest only once you own that guest through of course your web of loyalty uh, personalization uh, you know that evangelism that your uh, you know customers have for you or that trust that your customers have for you they will use that specific channel to come in and book and that's what will sort of lead that entire journey of owning the customer right and and, and that's very critical and, and and that's why even in the pandemic uh, we have actually maintained strong partnerships and, and and i see a lot of people are here from the medical or the you know insurance uh, fraternity accor actually tied up with axa uh, global partners uh, for online medical consultation or telemedical consultation across 110 plus countries and you know over 5000 hotels that even if you are traveling from a different country and you don't have the access to your own doctors even if you are staying in india or if you are staying in brazil or you are staying in uh, you know um, vietnam you can actually 
interact with that person, get the valid or the valuable tele uh, consultation, uh, and and be and rest, you know, uh, have a peace of mind. And and these are some of the things that we continue to do to sort of have that trust and own that customer, so that he or she directly comes in and uh, you know, uh, you know, books through our channel. So that's the end game. Hope I'm able to put that perspective. Yeah, thanks. Thanks so much, Amna. That's an interesting perspective. Before I move on to concluding comments, one uh, one point to the audience: if uh, if you have any questions, please let us know now so that we can uh, take the questions. Uh, one question which I've been wanting to ask: uh, right, we all have been talking about digital uh, transformation journey and uh, customer falling in love with digital journey and. So one experience which each one of you would want to quote uh, in terms of, uh, uh, and we will stay out of our own respective brands in the last one year or ever, where you have really fallen in love with the the digital journey which uh, which is being presented, and you said, "Wow, uh, it can actually happen like this," uh, and it saved you uh, you time, it saved you, uh, let's say, money or process. Uh, so any any thoughts on that uh, and we can go around the table and and check for views uh, so the question is very simple actually uh, any journey which you fell in love with uh, as a consumer uh, you know which you have come in contact with uh, kezar do you want to take that first kezar you are on mute yeah i think the way that the payments industry has responded uh, you know to this uh, lockdown has been tremendous and you know when you look at all these guys who you know google pay for example i think uh, it's a masterful revelation in terms of how they've added services after services uh, you know such that uh, today now you can even attach your credit cards uh, you know you don't necessarily need a bank account you can attach a credit card and pay uh, yeah. and you know the way they've kind of kept you hooked uh, across service providers uh, uh, full marks to them i think they've done a great job oh that's that's lovely thanks very very relevant anand yeah, I think a couple of brands uh, come to my mind. One is uh, somebody like Milk Basket, you know, uh, the way they have actually, uh, you know, done deliveries to your homes, six or seven o'clock in the morning. You, you, can, you can place an order, you know, till probably like 10 or 11 in the night. Have any problem, just write back to them. I think uh, they just, uh, you know, make it easy. Uh, the other one is, I think, um, I would say Airtel, uh, uh, all the network issues aside, uh, but uh, they have actually evolved their customer service. Uh, I think you don't know, you know, people like me, I would not like to call one-to-one -one, uh, or whatever is the number, but I would rather like to, you know, send a message to them over their social media, maybe like a tweet. Uh, that's just one-to-one, -one, you know, so a DM to them. And they're able to resolve things. So I think just empowering your team to actually give solutions to the customer, probably more just in time. Uh, I think that actually was quite helpful and, you know, nice of the brand. Thanks, thanks, Anand. Subrata? Subrata, you there? You are on mute, uh, so we can't, yeah. Subrata, you have any thoughts? Can't hear you. Okay, let's move. Uh, maybe Subrata, I'll come back to you. Uh, Naveen? Hi. Uh, so I'll, I'll say something which may be a somewhat unconventional approach to this. You know, uh, we've now kind of taken it for granted that we're in unlock mode. But uh, I remember at the peak of lockdown, uh, I was mm -hmm. frankly shocked as a customer that uh, Amazon was working. And, uh, you know, mm -hmm. very, very soon after uh, that uh, absolute stringent phase of lockdown, when officially we hadn't fully unlocked yet, you know, all these e-commerce deliveries that kept our homes going and you know, deliveries from the smallest of things to gadgets to whatever we needed to upgrade to our work from home or, you know, learn from home type of environments. I think that's an example of something as doing right by the customer. Yeah. It's not entirely... I'm different. sure all of us have experienced that, right? Uh, you know, in some way or the other. Yeah, lovely, lovely. Yeah. lovely. Uh, so, Ruta, are you back? Yeah, the sound issue. <laughs> I think the two brands yeah. which has really influenced me, one is uh, an education brand, which is of the Khan's University. So getting a lot of education information during this lockdown was amazing. And the way they crafted it and gave you uh, tutorial yeah. materials was amazing. Uh, second, yeah, I agree with Kaiser. The, uh, the offline Paytms and Google Pays and stuff have done a wonderful job of 
accessing giving us a amazing convenience of doing transactions which we didn't think about doing earlier so yeah, i never thought that my son will be taking maths to uh, <laughs> leave us classes right uh, anandita any examples which come to your mind yeah um, my biggest and uh, best example would be uh, microsoft and uh they are a partner of course but then the most important thing for me is uh uh you know for uh microsoft end user computing so all the work from home that is possible is because of end user computing and from a technology standpoint i think they did a fabulous job so did amazon web services because uh they made it possible for all these deliveries to take place or for all these apps to scale up in a very short period of time and deliver that milk or that grocery to your household uh, that's the back end for you so cloud companies uh, were really fantastic sure sure great guys it's it's interesting you know it's a uh, it very very diverse discussion different industries different perspectives people from the same industry having different perspectives and the way you look at customer journeys very interesting any concluding remarks uh, you know uh, 30 seconds from each one of you uh, any any message uh, you want to give to the audience in terms of digital journey what they should look at any do's don'ts any messages uh, you know we can we can start with navin maybe this time navin hi uh, so concluding remarks i would say if you are an organization looking at uh, digital seriously Uh, attempt to unify uh, your business metrics and goals with your CX metrics and goals, and ultimately your operational and process-driven metrics and goals. They don't work in silos. They don't work in isolation. It's you know I don't think it's futile. It's futile really to think of mobile customers or desktop customers or channels or employees as all disconnected pieces. It it really comes together if you're able to unify this, break you know these silos, and work as a system. great thank you thank you so much navin uh, subrata i guess this is one of an internal challenge of getting everybody in the same boat right from the cfo to the sales head and the other people on the ground and getting all of them to understand digital is not a, like a fad on a mobile it's something which can be used in work and actually help you all in effectively do of serving the customer relationship love is separate <laughs> i guess that's a big milestone to cross for starting any digital journey right uh, amazing kazad any views from you yeah just uh, quick 3 hours build relationships to drive retention and use the retention to drive revenue i love your one liners kazad thank you so much uh, anand yeah sure you know so i think uh, i would say that you know be consumer obsessed uh, you know make sure you have an actual journey uh, and you know constantly revalidate uh, because the journey is will change uh, you will find some barriers some frictions and uh, you just need to create a new solution across there and i would also say that uh, internally uh, have a cross functional agile team uh, work on a you know like a minimum value proposition pilot it trial it see how it works uh, you know understand from your consumer the feedback if it's actually helping them move down the funnel uh, so those would be the two points you know i would actually say thank you thank you anand somnath I think uh, the most important thing that probably even this pandemic has taught us is customer uh, connect or that customer centricity will always remain even if you have a top layer of digital access or digital levers at least for the uh, you know high touch industries or service industries uh, it cannot be replaced right and we should not try to also replace the basic human connect that is the very fundamental of at least service industry or hotel industry and uh, equally important is while we all are you know really at this fast pace of digitalization and changing technologies we should not leave our uh, you know uh, associates or our people in that entire training or the learning curve because what happens is that it will end up that the customer customers are experiencing very high tech whereas the employees are not able to sort of reach up to that level Uh, you know it's it's a last mile also should be aware of or get that basic training sure. of digital uh, you know inputs as well so these are the two things 
perfect thanks so much uh, thank you all uh, it was an amazing amazing learning session for me personally uh, lovely ideas lovely thoughts i think uh, uh, it's very interesting to see that uh, different industries are looking at digital journey all of them are looking at digital journey but are in different phases and uh, there are so many similarities in terms of challenges and at the same time there are so many similarities in terms of solutions keeping customer in the center and keeping the keeping the human aspect of the customer in in the center because eventually i guess we all believe that uh, you know uh, a happy customer is what will make uh, you know the success of digital journey as well and uh, very very interesting thank you so much uh, thank you to all the panelists thank you somnath thank you anandita thank you subrato thank you kaza thank you anand and thank you navin uh, this is ashish uh over to you kishab uh thank, kishab, thank you there? i'm right here and uh, well yes another amazing panel uh, couldn't agree more when you said uh, like the one liners were coming from i think all our panelists so i think we definitely got a take away from each one of you thank you very much and uh, why we get there our ritual right now because we are at the customer fest show so i want all of you to bring in your own unique energy uh, to this entire journey that we're on when i say customer i'm going to invite you to say fest okay uh, unmute yourself bring in the energy you can bring in your smile and uh, you know maybe your hands just ready everybody Three, two, one. Customer. Fast. Customer. Fast. All right. All right. All right. Thank you so much.